In this video, we'll be discussing the glue that holds the internet together, meaning the BGP routing protocol. Let's get started. Now we come to routing amongst ISPs, or inter-ISP routing. And the internet standards say that for an autonomous system to participate in the internet, they must use the Border Gateway Protocol, or BGP. So that's what we'll look at in this section when understanding inter-AS routing. We've been talking about the internet as consisting of a network of networks. You can think of BGP as the glue that holds the internet together, meaning it enables all of these separate networks to talk to one another. It does this by allowing each AS to advertise the subnets that they own to the rest of the internet so that traffic can find them. BGP can be broken down into eBGP and iBGP, where eBGP is used between ASs and iBGP is used to disseminate BGP routes within an AS. Here we have an example of three ASs which are connected to each other using eBGP and which use iBGP within the AS to disseminate the information. This dissemination within the AS is what allows each router to know what gateway they should use when sending traffic out of their AS to a particular destination. The implication here is that the routers at the edges must run both eBGP and iBGP. BGP protocol operation is substantially different from other routing protocols that we've seen because the BGP routers exchange information over a TCP session. So the BGP daemon operates as an application running over the transport layer. This is done because BGP generally needs to exchange large amounts of information. For context, the public internet routing table, which is exchanged by BGP, includes over 600,000 prefixes. So when exchanging all of this data, BGP can take advantage of the TCP features, including reliability and flow control and congestion control. It uses a long running TCP connection for the same reason as other application protocols that we've seen so that it can be more efficient and not have to go through connection setup and slow start each time it has more information to exchange. Another thing that makes BGP different is that it does not directly fall into a distance vector or a link state category. BGP is a path vector protocol. So the routers participating in BGP are aware of the entire path their traffic would follow to reach the destination. For example, if there is a subnet X that is part of AS3, AS3 will advertise a path vector to X, which consists of one hop, which is AS3, and the destination. We'll come back to path vectors in a minute. The path that we just saw was in terms of the AS number. So that doesn't exactly tell a router how to populate its forwarding table and get a packet to that destination. So we need a little more information, and that information is the next hop router. So we have the prefix being advertised, the AS path to get to it, and the next hop router, meaning the IP address that we need to forward traffic to, enable to get it to that destination. The primary intent of the BGP protocol is to enable autonomous systems to implement the policy that they want in their routing practices. So unlike OSPF or EIGRP, which are oriented around choosing the fewest router hops to get to the destination typically, BGP is about enabling policy tools and filters, such as making sure that traffic will not pass through a particular AS that is untrusted, or determining whether the AS will share the prefixes and path that it's learned with its neighbors or filter them, or managing the flow of money, meaning that each of these BGP pairing arrangements also correlates to a financial arrangement between the two businesses in question. And so if one connection is cheaper than another, there will likely be policies in place to cause traffic to use the cheaper connection, even if it's suboptimal by some other performance metric. So back to our prefix advertisement from AS3. If AS2's policy allows it to accept this path, then router 2C3 will propagate this information over iBGP to the other routers within its AS. And again, if it passes policy filters at router 2A, this prefix will be advertised to neighboring AS1. At this point, AS2 prepends itself to the path vector. And so now the path is AS2, AS3 when it arrives at AS1. AS1 will go through the same process of checking its internal policy and determining whether to accept this path. If we add another connection to our set of autonomous systems, AS1 may learn about prefix X directly from AS3. In this case, router 1C will have two paths to the same destination, and it will have to choose which of these to use. It will do this based on any of the configured policies about which paths to filter out or which paths to prefer due to some financial arrangement, but all other things being equal, the default will be to choose the path with the shortest path vector. 
And so router 1c would choose the path that just consists of AS3, and that's the one that would be propagated throughout its autonomous system. As we mentioned, the BGP messages are exchanged over TCP. They consist of the open message, establishing a new connection between two peers, update messages, which are probably the most common since every time there's a new path or an update to a path, an update message is generated, keep lives, which are sent in the absence of updates just to keep the long running TCP connection alive, and notifications, which would include error messaging or the intent to close the connection. Looking back at what happens when the path is advertised through IBGP, we see that routers 1A, 1B, and 1C are all learning that they can reach X through router 1C. So at router 1D, since we use interface 1 to get to router 1C, we'll also use interface 1 to get to destination X. Likewise at router 1A, if it normally uses interface 2 to get to router 1C, it will also use interface 2 to get to destination X. As we've mentioned, the key difference between intra-AS routing and inter-AS routing is the focus on policy. Within an AS, the entity probably wants to achieve the best performance possible. And because it's one entity controlling the whole network, it can focus on this goal of optimizing performance, at least within routing. It can use other mechanisms to achieve its policy goals. With inter-AS routing, on the other hand, policy is at the forefront, both determining where traffic will go when it leaves the network what traffic will be accepted into the network, and how it will be routed through the network. Having different inter- and intra-AS routing protocols is also part of the routing hierarchy, where information can be aggregated from inside the AS, and only that which is needed to be advertised externally is propagated to the inter-AS protocol. This helps reduce both the table size and the update traffic that propagates between ASs. And as we said with policy, this allows the intra-AS protocol to focus on performance, while the inter-AS protocol focuses on policy. This brings us to the issue of hot potato routing. For this example, in AS2, we're showing our OSPF link weights. So we know that AS2 can get to prefix X through either AS1 or AS3. But clearly from our big picture view of the network, we can see that the shortest path is to go through AS3 directly. However, since OSPF will make a performance decision based on the link weights, it is going to choose router A2 to get the traffic to destination X, because OSPF doesn't know anything about the inter-AS path lengths. So it is important to consider the relationship between the inter-AS and intra-AS routing protocols, and how it affects the optimization of routing on a global basis. A very common policy goal with BGP is to manage transit traffic. An ISP is being paid by its customers to carry their traffic, both to and from its customers. However, it would not necessarily want to carry traffic between other ISPs because they're not its customers, so it doesn't have a financial incentive to do so. And so this is a very common real-world policy to need to implement in BGP. So in this picture, we're showing networks W, X, and Y that are customers of ISPs A, B, and C. In the case of X, it is a customer of both B and C, and we would call that a dual-homed network. W and Y are single-homed customer networks with only one ISP each. So for any destination in W, A will advertise the path AW for its customer to the other ISPs so that any traffic needing to get to W is able to find it. B is going to advertise paths to W to its customer X, because X will pay B to forward traffic for it. However, B will not want to advertise prefixes in W to C, because neither C or W are B's customer and so it will get no compensation for carrying traffic between them. So C will not end up learning about this path. C will learn about the path to W through A directly, and will use this path only. We should note that in the event that there is an outage between A and C, C will then have no path to get to W, even though there is a connected path in the network. This is what we call a policy disconnect. Policy is preventing some of the paths in the network from being used. Another terminology is provider networks versus customer networks. And as we mentioned, X is dual homed to two different providers. And so as a customer, X does not want to route traffic between B and C. It only wants to send its own traffic out and receive traffic destined for prefixes in X. So X will have filtering in place so that paths learned through B do not get advertised to C and vice versa. So when a BGP router receives more than one path to a given destination, it will look through a series of filters, including the local preference value, which may tell it to prefer one over the other, 
You may use the shortest AS path, as we mentioned before. And then within the AS, a router may use hot potato routing to use the shortest path out of the network, irrespective of the BGP path length. And there could be arbitrary other criteria implemented in the policy. That wraps up our discussion of BGP. In the next video, we'll be looking at the software-defined networking control plane in more detail. See you then. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell. Thank you.